If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you pause this video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do is first graph the region that is enclosed by the three curves given in the question. So here are the graphs of those three curves. The first curve, 2x equals y squared, is represented by this sideways opening parabola that we can see here has an orange color to it. Now we've written the equation as x equals y squared over two. In a moment, we'll talk about how we could graph that parabola if we weren't sure how to do so. x equals zero is a vertical line that is colored in blue right here, and then y equals four is this green line that cuts horizontally and passes through four on the y-axis. So let's talk about how to graph that parabola real quickly. We can see that we could divide both sides of this equation by two, and that would allow us to solve for x. And then perhaps the simplest thing to do would be to make a little xy table. And since we solved the equation for x, what we actually want to do is plug in some y values in order to graph the parabola. So for example, if we use these values right here, if y were 0 and we plugged it in here, we'd have 0 squared divided by 2, which of course is 0. If y were 2, we would have 2 squared divided by 2, which of course is 2. And finally, if we plug in 4 here, we'll have 4 squared divided by 2, which is 8. So this would lead to three points here, 0, 0, 2, comma 2, and then 8, comma 4. So that would be one way to graph that arc of the parabola right there. We don't actually need the lower half of the parabola because our region that is enclosed is located above the x-axis. So that's just one little tip for graphing this parabola. Now what we need to do is take this enclosed region in orange here and revolve it about the y-axis. So we have to imagine that we're taking that region and spinning it around the y-axis like this. And so this is what the solid would look like if we spun the region about the y-axis. Our goal is to find the volume of this solid. Now, one thing we can do is select a point along the curve that's part of the shaded region, so this parabola right here. We can pick any arbitrary point, it doesn't really matter, so we'll select a point right here. And what we're gonna do is slice this solid horizontally at that point. And what that does is it creates a cylindrical structure. So we're gonna draw a cylinder as best as we can and that would be a cross section that cuts horizontally right through the solid. And our goal is to come up with an expression for the volume of that cylinder. It's a very short cylinder, but a cylinder nonetheless. We know that the volume of any cylinder is equal to pi times its radius squared multiplied by its height. Now, if we study this cylinder carefully, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but we can see that the radius would be measured from this point out to the edge of the cylinder. So it would be that distance marked in black right there. That distance is a horizontal distance, and we know that distances measured along a horizontal direction are simply denoted x. And so that serves as the radius. The height of this cylinder is very tiny. It's this dimension right here. And we can see that that dimension is a vertical dimension. It's up and down. And vertical dimensions are denoted using y as our variable. However, because it's such a tiny height, we actually call it dy. The notation dy just means that that height is very, very tiny. So we come over to the volume formula for that cylinder. We plug in the radius, which we said was x, and then the height we said was dy. Now, that would be the volume of just that one cylinder. But that one cylinder is not what we're looking for. We're looking for the volume of the entire solid. Now we can slice the solid into additional cylinders. We can make one right here. We can make another one up here. In fact, we can do it an infinite number of times. And if we added the volume of those infinite cylinders, we would get the volume of this solid object. Now we don't actually want to sit here and add an infinite number of cylinder volumes. So what we do in calculus is we integrate. We integrate the expression for the volume of just one cylinder and that will actually give us the volume of all of the cylinders added together. Now we can see that in our integral we have the variable x but we have it arranged to integrate with respect to y. That's a problem. We don't want to have x and then in integrate with respect to y. But luckily we know that x is equal to y squared over 2. So we're going to substitute y squared over 2 in for this x right here. And don't forget that we are squaring the radius. So we've replaced x with y squared over 2, but we still have the squaring on the outside of the parentheses because it was the radius squared. The only thing that's missing is the lower and upper limits. 
of integration. Now, we are integrating with respect to y, as indicated by the dy notation. So that means we have to include y values for both the lower and the upper limit. So we look at our picture, and we can see that the lowest y value of the enclosed region is y equals 0. It's located at that point right there. And then the highest or largest y value is up here at y equals 4. So that means our lower limit will be 0 and our upper limit will be 4. We'll clear up the workspace and begin to evaluate this integral. Now perhaps the first thing we can do is remove the pi to the outside of the integral since it is a constant. And then if we look at what we have left, we have y squared over 2 squared. So maybe we can come off on the side and simplify that. y squared over 2 squared would be y squared over 2 times y squared over 2. And then when we multiply fractions, we should multiply the numerators to make y to the fourth, multiply the denominators to make 4. So here we're going to have y to the fourth all divided by 4 dy. Now, in fact, we actually, if we look carefully, have a 1 fourth factor here. We can put a 1 right there, and a little multiplication symbol, and then under here we have the 4. So that 1 fourth right there can actually also be factored out because it is a constant. And now we can integrate y to the fourth using the simple power rule, basically. So we add 1 to the exponent to make y to the fifth, and then divide by that new exponent. And now we just have to include the limits of integration here from 0 to 4. We can plug in the upper limit first. In fact, we have to plug in the upper limit first. And so we're going to end up with 4 to the power of 5 divided by 5. And then we subtract what we get when we plug in the lower limit. Now we're going to end up with 0 to the power of 5 divided by 5. And of course, 0 to the fifth is 0. Divided by 5 is still 0. So this actually cancels out. And so we're left to just evaluate this right here. One way of doing that is to cancel a factor of 4 in the denominator here and another factor of 4 up here. So that's going to make this 4 to the power of 4. And then I suppose if you want, you can pick up your calculator, raise 4 to 4, and then divide by 5. And when you do that, you end up with 256 over 5. And then, of course, we can't forget that we still have a factor of pi as well. So we include that factor, and we have our final answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and then subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.